I'm John. And I'm Janil. And today we're going to give you a brief tutorial on how to use the web tool Processing JS. So the Processing JS is a tool that essentially lets you write in processing language and it will convert it to JavaScript for you. This tool was created by MIT in the 90s primarily to bridge the gap between programmers, artists, and data visualizers. It is a tool used for complex visual work such as 3D graphics and data visualizations. Why you might want to use this tool is that if you are unfamiliar with JavaScript or feel the need not to learn JavaScript and you just want to do graphics, processing JS is a tool is uses a very simple and easy language to learn. And this language is actually very Java-like and so if you come with Java experience or like Java then this tool you'll be able to pick this even quicker. Now there might be several reasons you also don't want to use processing JS if you're building a website. Primarily, it requires loading processing, which is its own language. Along with that, there's some libraries you have to use, especially if you're doing some higher level work for processing. And with those libraries comes additional storage space you need, especially if you're trying to host on a web server, which is inefficient, especially if you're trying to do th basic things like circles or rectangles on your web pages. All right, so let's get started. All this uh, code that we're gonna be dealing with is available in uh, GitHub repository in a link that you'll see in the description below. So uh, when you open up and open up the starter code folder, folder you'll see this uh, an HTML file here, and you can see here that all it's included is a script file with the processing JS file, and we're gonna all that's needed is a canvas element, and it refers to our processing file, all right? And other than that, we do not need our HTML. So this is what we're gonna be making right here. So what you've probably noticed already is that we're not doing this in JavaScript, we're doing this in processing. So we're using a processing file which follows the .pde instead of .js. Alright, so this is our end result, but what we currently have now is this little square. So the first thing we're probably going to want to do is make our canvas a little bigger. Alright, let's, uh, we can do that using the size method. Um, these methods are all, you can find the description and documentation for on the processing website. And we set it to 100. Seems like a good size. Let's save this, see what it looks like. Okay, that looks good. And maybe we want to change the background color too. Alright, let's... Background, let's go with 100. Alright, it's a little darker, alright, like that. And the colors in processing you use RGB format. So for this we use one value but you can use three to specify your red, green, and blue values for more advanced colors. Okay so what well, we put these all are in the setup method and this will be run in the very beginning of when your browser loads. And then after that we have a draw method here which essentially loops over and over and calls itself um, and, run, and runs whatever's inside this function. Alright and so what we have here is we made a class called ball and so, as you can see, this class ball is very similar to JavaScript in that you're making a constructor for an object. And we've got some basic variables set up here. We've got our x and our y values. That's where the ball is going to start. And we've got our y v value, which is going to be the velocity of the ball, as well as our gravity, which is you know how the ball is going to start moving. And along with that, we've got the actual constructor for the ball, which takes in two values, and that's the init x and the init y, which is going to be where the ball is actually going to start within the canvas along with setting the values of the, the velocity and the gravity to 1, that's going to make the ball fall. Okay, and I just created this draw method which will make our circle uh, using the x values that we were just given. Alright, so let's draw this and see. We need to make a global variable called, let's call it b. We need to do this in order to access this class uh, object that we we're about to create and its methods in the draw function every time it loops over. So when here we want to, if our b or our ball is equal to null, we want to set this to b. We want to set this equal to a new ball, and we'll just give it an initial, just put it with 50-50 right here. And after that, we want to draw our circle or our ball there we go that'll be calling the draw method we specified in the ball class and there we go there is our ball and all right so now we got a ball let's uh let's make this ball move let's uh make it 
uh, fall down. And we can do that by creating an update method in here and call this in our draw method up here so every time it loops over it will update the position of the ball. So to go into a bit more update about our draw method, that's what you can think of as rendering if you were just doing basic animations using JavaScript. So each time it's called, again, as Juniel said, it'll go through every single step that's listed inside of draw, but it's just called repeatedly as long as the page is open. All right, so we see here we're going to add the gravity to our YV value, our Y velocity, and we're going to change our Y positioning using our Y velocity value. Let's take a look at this. And it does not move. So you have to remember to call update inside the draw function. Whoops. And that's one go. of the more that's one of the steps you have to remember when you're writing and processing. There we go. And oh and see here you got a little trail going on here. And because what's happening is every time you're running draw, we're not clearing anything here. So in order to deal with this issue, we can clear the entire canvas by setting the background color again like that by doing so we'll get a single ball there we go and now what we want to do we want to make this ball actually bounce back up so we can do we can put a conditional on our if on our update statement if if our y value is say 48 because you can take consideration of the radius of the ball and set our y velocity equal to negative 20 Let's take a look at how this looks. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so now let's uh, add some functionality with the mouse. So every t we want to make it so that wherever you click, this ball is going to appear. So in our draw method, we want to check if our mouse is pressed. And if it is pressed, we want to set a new ball. Two, and we have these variables that are given to us that essentially give you the X and Y point of where your mouse is. So unlike JavaScript, processing actually keeps track of where your mouse is on the screen. And as long as the current page that you're loading everything in is open, it will follow where your mouse is. And you can just use the mouse X and mouse Y values as opposed to having to use screen X or screen Y. Okay, so now we can get rid of this because we now create a new ball whenever we click. Uh, we need to still make sure that these, when it's, since there's no ball instantly when we create, this is going to create an error because it's trying to update on something that's null. So what we want to do is we want to move this inside this statement and check to make sure if B is not null, then we want to update and draw this. Okay, let's see. Work. So there's no ball here. Create a ball, you click, and there it goes. This ball here looks a little lonely. Uh, how about we get some more balls in here? What do you say, John? Yeah, man, we need more bouncing balls in this screen. One's just not enough. Alright, so currently we only have one ball in our global variable scope, and in order to change that, we want to put, we want to have an array list to store multiple balls. So we're just going to call this balls. Now remember that processing is based on Java, so most of the things you can do in Java you can also do in processing, like using array lists. Most storage types carry over to processing. Okay, so we want to add a new ball to our array list whenever our mouse is clicked, so we're going to do that by overriding the process.js mouse clicked function. And the reason we're doing this is because mouse pressed is just a boolean that processing keeps track of for whenever the mouse button is being pressed down. But when we're trying to put in multiple balls, we want to detect when there's a single click so we don't put more balls than we need to. And with mouse clicked, it detects when the button's been pressed and then released also so that you can only put down one ball every time it's clicked. Okay, so when you click, you create the new ball at the mouse position and we add it to our array. Now what we want to do is we can get rid of this. And now we want to check to make sure our array list actually has some balls. So we're going to check make sure the size is greater than zero. After that, we're going to loop through our array list using a for loop. Sort. And just like in every other language, for loops are all the same. You. If you know how to use Java, you know how to use processing already. It's very straightforward and even more simplistic than Java. And that's one of the major benefits to using processing. 
update and we're going to draw each one. There we go. Now we save this. And let's see this in action. Alright, oh, there we go, a pair of balls. And let's get some more. Got a lot of balls in here. There you have it. Easy, simple ball bouncing ball simulator. And this is just scraping the surface of what you can do in processing. There's unlimited potential. We encourage you to go experiment, use your knowledge of Java, and just programming in general to make whatever fun animations or graphics you want. And remember that you can still use data types from other sources in this. So even if you want to make data visualizations, you can all do this in processing and then use processing JS to send it onto your website. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, this has been Janil. And John. And uh, have fun with processing JS.